Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Hey, do me a favor. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for the notifications. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you do that five star. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. I don't know about you guys, but I know personally this last year and a half has been my life going all the way down in a spiral between the economy, closing my business, family, kids, everyday life pulling me in different directions. I don't know which way is up or which way is down anymore. I felt like I was alone. I felt like I had nobody to talk to. I felt like I was a burden on my family. But thankfully, BetterHelp hooked me up. They hooked me up with a licensed therapist. And you know the coolest thing about them? If you're not happy with the therapist that you're talking to, you can switch therapists at any time, no charge. I mean, you can do all this from the comfort of your home, from your phone, tablet, laptop, computer, whatever. All you have to do is take a five-minute survey, and usually within 48 hours, BetterHelp will have you connected with a licensed therapist. There's no stigma to talk to a therapy anymore. Everybody's talking to a therapist. I'm telling you, man, you'll feel so much better getting a grasp on top of that mental health. You'll be able to open up and feel better about yourself and life. I'm telling you now, BetterHelp hooked me up and they're going to hook you up. Use that promo code everyday BS. So it's BetterHelp dot com forward slash everyday bs and better help will take 10 percent off your first month of therapy so here's the chance guys get connected get hooked up open up talk to somebody it's time to start chatting use better help what's up guys thanks so much for tuning in i Sorry, I've been away. First vacation in many, 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 many adult years. Actually, I would say my very first. Honestly, um, it was phenomenal. Um, I needed a chance to spend quality time with my family, bond with my wife and my kids, and focus on my future and really contemplate and weigh out what's going to happen in my life. And this is something that my wife wanted to do. She's been wanting to do for a, a while. And it was by far the most amazing, spectacular, beautiful trip ever. We did a car cross-country road trip. And as many of you guys know, I live in Florida. So we cruised up 95 and then we shot out 10 all the way. We cruised all the way out to Arizona, visited some family, hung out, went to the Grand Canyon, and then cruised back. So with that being said, I am so thankful that we did this. I was a little nervous and skeptic at first, you know, being cooped up in a car for hours and hours on end uh, with the kids and, you know, worried about them, you know, nitpicking and fighting and don't touch me. You're in my spot. You're in my space. This is my side. Get off my side. You know, like when we were kids, you know, but I'm 49. I'll be 50 this year. And I have to say, you got to do this. America has lost to this stuff right here, to the phones, to the computers, to the tablets, to everything. Get in the car, man. Plan it out, map it, cruise it, enjoy it, take tons of pictures. And let me tell you something. 
Americans don't do this no more. Nobody cruises across country anymore and does things like this. And I am telling you now, it is amazing. I had such, such an amazing, great time. My wife and I, we had a blast. We bonded. We can, I think our relationship became stronger on this trip. And like I said, we started off here in Florida and out to Arizona and then back. My wife started off the first leg. We left at 4 a.m. And we drove. And, you know, we got up 95, out 10 and whatnot. And we cruised through, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. We did have one major issue happen to us, Baton Rouge. And we're cruising on 10. And, you know, my wife's driving. And all of a sudden, you hear, And we're like, what the fuck? And my wife said, what the fuck? And she looks down, and sure enough, man, that indicator on the uh, the dash comes up, pulls over to the left. Thank God, thank God that on we were in the, the left lane, the far left lane, and right next to the left lane was a big, wide opening. And we were able to pull over there. And sure enough, we pull over. Now... I, I I want to say something, and it's it's crazy I'm saying this because, you know, we're so worried about anything and everything anymore, and we feel there aren't many good people left in the world, and everybody's out for themselves. But let me tell you something. No, there are good people out there. There are amazing people and to the gentleman who pulled over and gave us a hand i commend you my friend and i thank you from the bottom of my heart so we have our blowout we pull over i gotta pull everything out of the back of the car lift the hatch get all the luggage out and everything and you know most cars nowadays they don't even come with full-size spares they come with that little 55 mile an hour rubber donut you got to put on a car And you get that stupid little scissor jack and whatnot. So I get everything out and and I get the scissor jack out and everything. And so I crack all the lug nuts on the tire. I get those loose. And I'm all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm taking this scissor jack and I'm putting it underneath the car to get it going. And all of a sudden this car pulls up and veers over backs up and he man it's bumping boom 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 you know and uh yeah that's my techno but uh i'm I, you know i'm on the side the tires on the side it's facing the highway so it's it's kind of a, a dangerous thing because you got you know you have cars that are flying by 70 65 75 miles an hour shoom, 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 you know and you can feel the wind blowing off of everything you know and whatnot but this guy backs up and my wife, she's like, oh, shit, what the fuck, you know? And this dude jumps out of his car, opens up his back door, and bam, he pulls out this freaking floor jack. And he comes over, man, and he throws it underneath my car. Boom, 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 jacks it up, reaches down, pulls out a snap-on, zip, 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 lug nut remover, and, un, you know, boom, that quick. I'm soaked. And... I'm going to give props to a company, and I don't usually do this, but I'm going to give props to Under Armour. My wife bought me these shirts, and they're thin, and I'm soaked, man. I am sweating soaked out there trying to get this tire done, and this guy helps me out, boom, and everything like that. And after everything was said and done, I tried to give this guy some money. He refused to take my money, but I I was like, dude... No, thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. Get yourself some gas, buy yourself some lunch, a beer, whatever. And on he went. I'm soaked. I'm wearing this Under Armour t-shirt. My wife just bought me. And it's 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 a, a thin, thin grade shirt. Super comfortable. I'm soaked to a tee. And I'll tell you what, man. In a matter of minutes, I was dry. I was bone dry and no sweat stains, salt 
stains on the shirt whatsoever, but I was dry. And thank God, man, I overdid the deodorant that morning. I'm like, the chest, you know, like old school and everything. But yeah, good product. Thank you, Under Armour. You saved my day that day. Um, But yeah, there are still good people in the world, man. You know, and this gentleman, I mean, just out of the blue, pulls over, gives me and my wife a hand, and then... I get the spare on and we've Googled some directions to the local tire place and we get to the tire place and whatnot and uh, ended up having to buy a new tire. So what happened was, is that my wife just bought this car and not knowing that the tire on the car was already plugged. So apparently they had a hole in the tire and it was already plugged because the plug blew out that's what it was it was a perfect round hole from when you i don't know if you guys ever plug a tire but you you pull the item out and they have a separate tool which is like a a shredder um a file that you pop in the hole and you clean the area and you get it and it makes a perfect round hole to put the plug into and um yeah that plug blew out. So we ended up, you know, an hour and a half and 200 bucks later, we're back on the road. But, you know, the cool thing was we didn't let that shit get us down. We did not let it beat us down. We did not let it, you know, take our high and bring it down. It which is part of the road trip. And it's a part that we'll never forget. And it, it just makes the trip even better. It made us focus more on, the good in people and the portion of unexpected things do happen in life. And it's, you know, it is part of life and we are able to get through that and move forward. And that's what we did, man. We uh, got through it. We moved forward. We got back on the road and it was all good. And I'll tell you what, man, it was amazing. It was an amazing trip. Um, the sad part was, is my wife really wanted to um, visit one of the big cemeteries um, in Louisiana, and w- we we weren't able to stop for that. But you could pass it on the highway, and that thing is huge. But we're going to make a separate trip one time, and her and I are going to go out there and do the whole tour and, and whatnot. She likes all that stuff, so it was pretty cool. But, yeah, man, uh, there's good people out there still. So don't, you know, I know the world is all chaotic right now and a bunch of shit and, and whatnot. But just remember, there are good people still out in this world, and uh, and they care. And to the man who pulled over on the side of the road, thank you, brother. I deeply appreciate it. And uh, you definitely earned your golden ticket that day. Mm. Coffee. But, yeah, so, you know, we, you know, got the kids in the car. We're cruising. We're getting through everything. And at the same time, we're doing this road trip. You know, we're watching the weather and shit because you guys have seen, you know, we had that freaking hurricane coming up through the Gulf and whatnot. So we're, you know, we're, we're trying to keep our eyes open on, uh, the weather and whatnot. So we're, you know, we're cruising all this because, you know, we're taking 10 straight across the States, you know, and this thing is coming up and they had it going in a, you know, the typical spaghetti direction on the models and everything like that, but it ended up coming up and it was coming up hard and it was going to come up through Houston. So we, uh. We ended up pulling over our first night just outside of Houston and we stayed the night and uh, we get up early the next morning, like 4 a.m. again and start the trek again all over. And we're just hauling through Texas, man. And let me tell you something. That is a long state to drive through. Long, very, very long state to drive through. Um. It is gorgeous, though, man. Some spots are a little bit bumpy and rough. It's like, dude, where? what's up with the fucking roads, you know? But um, 
yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was badass. Let me see something here. How long? I ten through Texas. Let's see here. So eight hundred and eighty miles. So Interstate ten, uh, east to west highway in the southern United States that runs through Texas for almost eight hundred and eighty miles. And uh yeah, so unbelievable. And we saw so much shit. It was so cool. I mean, you you would be driving and there is nothing in front of you. There's nothing out the side and you're just cruising Interstate 10. And it gets scary sometimes too because like you've really got to think about and watch and check your gas gauge because there's parts, man, where you're driving and you might forget and you're you're cruising along in Texas and there's no gas station or stops for over a hundred something miles so you know it, it it's it's one of those things man you plan it out be smart you know make sure you have water and and things that you need in the vehicle and make sure you get a full tank man when you're cruising because you, you don't want to end up on the side of the road and 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 shit like that but man the ranges the you could see uh, you know the oil pumps and stuff like that in certain areas and then you know you're just cruising along and everything like that and when you get down towards um like el paso and shit like that you're coming up to el paso i mean you can look out your window and you are not far from the border at all and you can see the border i mean you could see shit and so the cool thing was is the wife and i you know we use gps to a point but we also did a paper map. So we bought one of the big road atlas books and, you know, we had everything highlighted and marked in there, certain stops that we were going to make when we were going through and whatnot. But seeing how close Mexico was and whatnot, you can look out and you could see portions of the border and the wall and, and things like that. And um, we did the bypass around El Paso. So we went down and and around it and whatnot, which was kind of cool because it took us out of all that heavy bullshit traffic and whatnot. But we did a lot of backcountry roads. The backcountry roads were really cool and neat and just seeing things like that just made the trip even better, more memorable, you know, because it's those things that you'll remember over, you know, the major highway and whatnot. It's the little things in back back rural America that pop up, man. And it, there was some really cool, cool shit. And, you know, once we got through that and we got into uh, New Mexico, that was just awesome because, let's see, we got, I would say, we got into New Mexico and then we started making our way in and then we drove one of our first stops that we wanted to make and do on the way in to Arizona was um, Tombstone. So, you know, we're cruising through New Mexico. We're marking off different things that we were going to go and do. But we decided to save the one New Mexico trip for our way back. So we just cruised right through New Mexico, but New Mexico was gorgeous, man. There was so much cool stuff. And I thought the coolest thing, my wife and I, we, you know, we're, we're cruising along and then all of a sudden you start seeing these, it's dead, nothing, you know, it's just tumbleweeds and cactuses and, and all dry. And then all of a sudden it's bright green and just lines of trees. And I didn't know this, but, uh, pistachio trees are grown in that area so i guess the pistachio trees are big in arizona california new mexico and i think one other state i'm not quite sure but that's a fun fact that there are male and female trees for the pistachio tree so the female trees 
are all lined up and then they have these male trees that actually blow when the wind blows it carries on to the female trees and and shit like that which is wild i didn't know this so you know it's a fun little fact to learn right but yeah we get through new mexico gorgeous gorgeous state and then um we get into arizona and then boom there it is we're looking at our clocks we're looking at our map and we're like all right let's do this so we drive an hour i I think it was like an hour and a half off our beaten path and we went to tombstone tombstone arizona i was so stoked man i don't know about you guys but i i like western shit and um i'm a fan of you know uh Doc Holiday, Wyatt Earp, and and shit like that. So we went to Tombstone, and uh, it was so freaking cool, man. man. It takes you back. Main Street is a bunch of streets. It still runs a dirt road. Um, they have like little areas blocked off. You can't run a car straight down, but you can go down the side street. So if it's running parallel, you can you know drive down the other streets. You know, but all the old buildings have the wood plank walk in front of them and arches and there are uh, stage coaches and guys dressed up and horses pulling these stage coaches going up and down and whatnot uh so much memorabilia the the original spot of the shootout the okay corral um big nose kates the bird cage wide herbs uh docks bar uh, stuff like that man it was so cool but um, the birdcage was really, really cool. They have the original bar in that place still. And it's never been moved. It's still in there. Um, there is the catwalk in there where the girls would walk across the top and flaunt themselves to the, you know, the guys at the bottom playing cards and whatnot. But the memorabilia... And the history in that place is, is phenomenal, just phenomenal. Original bullet holes in the bar, in the ceiling, in some of the paintings, in the frames on the wall. And uh, they gave my daughter a flashlight and asked her, go look in that bullet hole. And if you look in it, you can still see the lead from the bullet, which was pretty wild. But yeah, man, it was, it was just amazing. I mean, it was so surreal. It was just like, wow, it's just breathtaking. And it takes you back. And it was just The sad part was, is that we got there at a certain time. So, you know, things start closing and and whatnot. But if you get a chance, you you got, man, you have to see this stuff. You have to cruise America. And it's it's just amazing. It's it's mind blowing, you know, that we have this history and it's just hitting away and you got to get there and check it out and it's just it's awesome we took tons and tons and tons of pictures on our phones but my wife and i you know we're, we're old school when it comes to taking pictures and whatnot we use our phones we we do get our pictures and then we send them off and we have them developed and i love having that i guess you could say that memory of photos you know i grew up with photos as a kid remember sitting at the dining room table or on the couch with your family and flipping through a photo album and being made fun of or you know being embarrassed of certain things because it was captured on film or whatnot but i mean that's 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 what i grew up with and that's the way it should still be you know you gotta have that we can't we can't just rely on this shit all the time man it's crazy but i think by the end of our trip i think we did a total of almost 700 photos that we had developed I mean, we have like two or three boxes out in our living room right now that we have to get uh um photo albums for but man they're gonna they're gonna make great albums you know what i mean like you're gonna have everything in there hey guys if you can't get up in the morning and you need to pick me up i'm telling you now black out coffee coffee for america's warriors that's right america's warriors it's the be awake don't be woke coffee tons of flavors great taste amazing coffee 
So go to www.blackoutcoffee.com and at checkout, punch in everyday BS. That's right, everyday BS. So get yourself some. It's it's just one of those things, man. You know, I, Tombstone, Arizona. I got um, I picked up a magnet, and it's all four guys. You know, Wyatt and Doc and his brothers and stuff like that. And it's just a little metal cutout. It's, it's pretty sweet. And I had to get a T-shirt, man. So I'm your Huckleberry. I got that T-shirt, a Doc Holiday T-shirt. But, it, man, it's just so breathtaking and so cool. And then, we, you know, we jumped in the car and then we shot out. And we had about, I think it was about three and a half, maybe four hours to go to our next stop, which was family. And we went there and stayed there for a few days. And enjoyed that. And then we had some other family members fly in and whatnot. And we all did a Grand Canyon tour. So we drove for a little over four hours north in Arizona to get up to the canyon. And I'll tell you what. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this place or ever been there. But holy Mary, mother of God, that place was breathtaking. I mean, breathtaking taking so you know we get there and it's this huge thing and we get we we get to the gate and you know you got to pay to get in um they do something very special though for the military so if you're prior service retired veteran whatnot and you show your id they give you a special card and it's good for any national park for the rest of your life and they're so nice and amazing i mean just unbelievable so we get through the gate and we drive in and you drive a little bit and then you get to a parking lot and you can park your car and i believe we i think I don't, I, I don't know if we were on the north rim or the south rim. I don't, I'm not sure, but you know the Arizona side, and um, we park and then we get out and then you know just just off to the left there are a bunch of um, buildings and whatnot. You got restrooms and gift stores and information booths and and whatnot, and uh, I think like. Uh, snack bar and everything and then there's little signs and stuff like that but uh i thought one of the coolest signs was my wife and i we looked down we're reading these little signs and it's um a picture of a squirrel and somebody feeding it and it says that they deal with at least 20 something 20 to 30 times a day they deal with squirrel bites because the squirrels come right up to you. I mean, they'll, they'll climb up your fucking leg, man. They are there and they get so close and it's like, let the squirrels feed themselves. They're wild animals. Let them take care of themselves. Don't feed the animals. And they end up having to deal with like 30, 30 squirrel bites a day. It's crazy. But, you know, so we're, you know, we're looking at these signs and shit and, and, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm looking around, I'm like, and then there's a, a sign that says, uh, Canyon, it's like five minute walk to the Canyon. So we start walking the trail, you know, it's, you know, my wife and the kids and in-laws and their kids and whatnot. And we're hiking along. I'm like, where the frick is this thing? I mean, like you can't miss it. And you come out of the trees and then all of a sudden, bam, there it is, man. It just hits you. And you're like, holy shit. It is gorgeous. Um, the colors, the the wind, the the temperature. I've never seen anything so beautiful in my life, man. Never. Um, it looked fake. It looked like a backdrop. It looked fake. I was just like, wow. Unbelievable. It's a moment in my life that I will cherish forever. And I can cross that one off my bucket list. 
you know, some one of the sights I wanted to see before I died. It was so cool. I mean, I'm telling you, man, you look, there are points you can walk out and look down. Holy shit. Breathtaking. Mind-blowing. And it, these are just some of the things, man, that we have in this country that are just amazing. I, I, think, I think, what did my wife say? It's like one of the 11 wonders that we have. You know, it's just amazing. And the way the wind blows, you look down in the canyon and the different layers and the rock and the colors. And it's just gorgeous, man. Just gorgeous. Just mind-blowing. Totally, totally mind-blowing. I could have spent hours and hours and hours just walking to certain points and sitting and staring, you know. And, oh, man. I want to go back. I wanted to go back so bad. But it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. You know, and then, you know, we had a four hour trek back to the house, you know. But I'm telling you, man, you got to check it out. I, I just want to go back so bad. It is drop dead gorgeous. But, you know, we ended up heading out and they, and working our way back home and stuff. And uh, we were out there about a week. And on our way back, we decided that we wanted to do certain things. So we have some really close friends that live in New Mexico, and we were able to swing by and stay at their house. And they were about a six and a half hour ride from where we were. And we went out there and we left early enough that when we got there, we had plenty of time to hang out. And oh, man, talk about having a piece of property that was this gorgeous. It was the, the sunset was the most amazing sunset ever seen, and it was just beautiful, and the temperature cooled down at night, the house was gorgeous, and my friends were just amazing hosts, and I mean, they, they prepared, they smoked a, a, a pork butt, and made scotch eggs, and armadillo eggs, and my it was amazing. It was an amazing night. And then, uh, you know, we got up early the next morning and we made our cross country home trip, which was so cool because like we drove parts of 66. Um, we didn't stop, but we, we saw it out the window Cadillac ranch. And I don't know if you guys ever seen that, but it's all the cars like nose deep in the ground and they're just up in the air. Oh my God. It's so cool. And then seeing the signs on the highway, you know, you, you have the interstate sign and then you have the historical Route 66 sign and just seeing shit like that and pulling over to a rest stop and seeing signs that say, you know, watch for rattlesnakes and shit like that. But I was telling my wife, we were driving through um, uh, New Mexico and we, we get to this uh, one canyon and, you know, we're driving, we're at the top of this mountain, man, and it's up there. And my daughter's like, Daddy, look at those little cars all the way down at the bottom of that mountain. And I'm like, holy shit. I mean, that's like, they're like ant size from our vision, you know. Let them know, you know, uh, you know, unknown that we're actually making our way down this canyon, man, in the snake motion coming all the way down through reservation land and stuff. And we end up being one of those little tiny cars at the bottom of the mountain just unbelievable and amazing and it's awesome and just watching my kids face and you know it, it was amazing it truly truly is amazing and then we you know we went through we went to roswell new mexico which was so freaking cool and it was honestly um it was a lot bigger than i expected I was expecting Roswell to be a smaller town. My wife, the same way. Um, but it was so populated and the business growth in the area was unbelievable. I mean, they had everything and everything. Anything and everything was in Roswell. And uh, But it was so freaking cool. We did so much shit. We toured so many different things. Um, we went to the UFO Museum. Um we did this little glow in the dark 
spacewalk tour, which was super cool. And um, we went and seen a couple different things and we took tons of pictures. And I think one of the coolest things was I got this. This is one of my things I, I had to get. So this is a poster. If you guys are listening and not watching the video, but this is a uh, remake of the Roswell Daily Record from Tuesday, July 8th, 1947, about the flying saucer that crashed on the ranch. And uh, yeah, it's so cool, man. So, so cool. I was super stoked to get that. But I uh, got a couple other things too. And and uh, I think one of the coolest things was for my kids was the hotel we stayed in in Roswell. It was the Baymont. And uh, it was on Main Street and, you know, they had a pool. The kids wanted to go swimming. We had the indoor pool and whatnot. And, uh, but they do a, a continental breakfast. The continental breakfast was good. Biscuits and gravy, eggs, bacon, sausage, you know, all that stuff. And they had a waffle maker. And the waffle maker was so freaking cool. In the center of the waffle maker was a, an alien head. So your waffle had an alien. So you had alien waffles in the morning. Super, super cool. Good food, good trip, amazing. And then from there, man, we trekked all the way back home. And, you know, we made our little stops here in Texas and, um, you know, through Arkansas and Alabama. And, you know, we hit, you know, all these little sections. But, you know, we had to make our little stops here and there because, you know, we collect little trinket uh, magnets for the refrigerator of where we've been and what we've done and stuff like that. But to end the trip on a, on a great note for my son, who was a huge fan of stranger things, we stopped in Georgia. We spent the night in Georgia, Jackson, Georgia, downtown Hawkins. And we had a blast. Hawkins headquarters in Jackson, the guy, the gentleman who runs that place, Super awesome. If you get a chance and you go to Jackson, you got to stop stop in Hawkins headquarters. It brought me back to the 80s, man. Every Teddy Rockspins video games, um, Atari, uh, candy, snacks. I, it was so cool, man. We, we saw, um, we stopped in one area and uh, I don't know what it is. But I swear that they record or shoot shows in sketchy fucking areas. Serious, serious, sketchy areas. So the school, Hawkins Middle, is in a strange, sketchy fucking neighborhood. And uh, we went there. We saw it. But uh, they're getting ready to tear it down. So I don't, I, I believe... In, It'll be torn down soon, but we were able to get in there and see it and whatnot, get some pictures on the outside and, and everything. So we saw the Hawking School, and then we shot over to the cemetery, which is in another sketchy neighborhood, and uh, which was really cool. So we were trying to find where Billy was laid to rest from Stranger Things, and uh, so we're having trouble looking for it. So my son pulls up his TikTok video of somebody who's like here's how to find billy's grave you know and we're looking and we're walking around man there's so much shit for that area for that grave it was so cool somebody had a replica uh california license plate from billy's uh trans am in the in the show there and people were leaving notes and different things and shit it was so cool but we got to that part and then, like I said, we uh, did downtown Hawkins. We saw the so-called library and the, uh, the the store and the radio shack and and stuff like that. So, I mean, there was a lot of cool shit, man. And it's definitely, we saw the theater, um, uh, the alleyway where they fist fought and shit like that, where John and, um, what's his name, fought Jonathan and... Uh, the other kid fought in the back of the uh, alleyway and then um what else man it, it was just it was just so real it was so cool just seeing this little town in the middle of nowhere but if you guys get a chance definitely go down check it out if you're into that type of thing but yeah jackson 
Jackson, Georgia. So cool, man. Small little town. Perfect. And uh, you got to check out that Hawkins headquarters, man. That dude was so cool, man. They got so much. They got uh, out front was awesome because the guy bought the van and he converted the van into the surfer boy pizza van, man. So it looks just like the van in the, in the show. And then uh, in the store, they have a back room where they have a bunch of like memorabilia and, and things like that. And they got tables and shit. And then they have a whole wall where there's so many people have signed who have come through there, but uh, they, they got costumes you can put on like the ghostbuster costumes and the walkie talkies and shit like that. And it's all free to do. I mean, the guy lets you, you know, so you can do a photo op and whatnot, but yeah, it's really cool. So Hawking headquarters, man, in Jackson, Georgia, give you a shout out boys place was awesome thank you so much for your hospitality and everything and uh yeah man it was it was awesome but you know these are the things like we'll cherish forever man as a family you know doing this road trip and it's just seeing these sites and remembering and then having the photos in an album to flip through later on down the road, be like, Hey, you remember when we, we did that road trip, man. And you know, you got that book and you start flipping through and then everything just comes back to you. Like it was yesterday. That's, that's, that's America, man. That's, that's freaking America right there. You know what I mean? But you know, like I was saying, you know, we come back the Northern end of Texas and going through that part and whatnot. But while I was there, I was watching uh, some online stuff. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe the the flooding, man, that happened in Houston. Holy shit, man. I'm so thankful that, you know, we got through that area when we did on our way out because Houston got nailed, man, nailed. And I believe they were saying that that thing should have been more than considered a category one, but I'm not, not a hundred percent on that, but yeah, it was crazy. Wow, man, what a, what a trip it was, guys, you know, and I know I'm rambling on and shit like that, but I appreciate you guys listening and hanging out with me and talking. Like I said, this is, um, I got a lot of cool shit in the works for the podcast. Um, I just wanted to get on here. I wanted to touch base with you guys. I didn't disappear, been on vacation. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I been hanging with my family enjoying it um i got a new chapter in my life getting ready to start i'm super excited and you know i'm just going to keep on putting up content and making little shorts so make sure you guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that follow button follow me on twitter uh follow me on instagram you know there's a facebook as well you know the everyday bs podcast on facebook everyday bs podcast on instagram uh twitter is uh the philly john and uh whatnot and i mean it's it's been a lot of fun and i love doing this man and i'm excited for some of the guests i got coming up i'm gonna talk a little bit more into uh some more military stuff um been very excited to talk about some uh ufo stuff and you know some odds and ends and weird shit and stuff like that but i'm i want to talk about what i want to talk about and hopefully you guys enjoy it and you know and it's, it's just one of those things, man. It's just like, there's, there's so many people out there and they're all doing the same thing. And it's like, you, you, you know, you get the same person on the same podcast over and over and over again and whatnot as, you know, and I know recently, um, I don't, I don't, I don't get political and I don't like to be political, but I know there's the big news has been the Trump assassination attempt. So that's blown up everything. And there's so much out there on that. And, you know, I don't give a shit if you are left, right, whatever you are. I don't believe in trying to hurt somebody for their viewpoints and, and whatnot, you know, the world is going crazy and strange. We need to focus a little bit more on what's right. You know, um, just be kind to one another. That's all, all we have to do. I mean, we don't have to, if you don't like what somebody's saying, don't listen. I mean, if you don't, it's, it's just crazy, man. I mean, I don't want to, I'm not into all that shit and it's sad, but it's just like, every time I turn on the news, it's a hearing 
from the Secret Service, and then it's it's this and it's that, and they're not answering questions, and that it's uh it was all set up, and you know if he turned his head, and and it's just like good God, man, it's fucking nuts, man, it's fucking nuts. The world's crazy, but. I'm kind of glad I wasn't here to really witness a whole lot of it. I was enjoying my time with my family, driving across the country, making memories, taking pictures, you know, the way you, you should be doing your life in the summertime, you know, it's summer of 2024, man. You know, can you believe it? it's 2024? It's crazy, man. Sometimes I wish I could go back to the eighties, man. When I was, you know, 12 years old and, 11 years old and shit like that but man it is wild it is wild kids are getting ready to go back to school um i started a new book um i don't know if you guys she's been all over the podcast too but um uh annie jacobson's new book man nuclear war scenario holy shit you guys get a chance read that i mean that's phenomenal it's crazy, but um, she's been on some amazing podcasts, and uh, I've been seeing a few of those, and uh, it's just it's just nuts, man. You know, that's the other thing, too, man. I've been wanting to do this podcast stuff, like I said before, for a long, long time. I just didn't have the balls to do it. I felt like I couldn't do it. I felt like I had nothing to say, nothing to talk about. But there are some really amazing podcast hosts out there. And I want to give a shout out to one I watch every almost every day just to follow him because he's phenomenal. And he's so down to earth and he's not caught up in all the bullshit. And he speaks his mind. He speaks his truth. And he wants to talk about what he wants to talk about. And that's Sean Ryan. So I don't know if you guys follow the Sean Ryan show. You guys got to check out Sean Ryan. Sean Ryan is the shit. And he is just down to earth. Um, He has amazing guests on his show. And he's just a amazing person. I mean, you know, and from everything that I've been reading and following on Sean, I mean, the man is just, you know, he cares, you know, he cares about his family. He focuses on what he feels that he needs to focus on. You know, he's not out there trying to be this person, this person, this person, have this high celebrity, this high celebrity or this. He talks about what he wants to talk about. And I think that's freaking awesome, man. And it's just like, I see so many podcasts out there and it's like, it's the same stuff over and over and over again with the same people and the same this and that. And, you know, you look around and it's this guy's on this show, this guy's on that show. And then it's just, it's just one of those things. And I don't know, man, I don't, I don't want to be like that. And I know there are possibilities of good things to come with a good podcast. And I hope I make those good decisions, but I also do this because I enjoy doing it. I like talking to people, having people come over, sit in front of me. And that is my goal is to do more in person pocket. I mean, I got this whole table here I built and I've got microphones and monitors and everything is here now. And it's in this room in my house. It's comfortable. It's cozy. That's the way I want it. I don't want to have to be building a studio maybe in due time but for now my door is open there are open seats so somebody wants to sit in front of me and talk to me i'll sit and talk about anything you know as long as it's something that is for good and not hatred i'm all about it man i'm all about it but I want to thank you guys for everything you've done for me, for all your support and checking out my affiliates and stuff like that. And make sure you guys do check these guys out. I have all the links in my description 
for all these affiliate programs that I, I try and use, um, especially, you know, the coffee and food and, and whatnot. I do use these companies and they are good. So make sure you check them out in, in the description below. Um, but I mean, other than that, man, it's just, I'm excited for the future of the podcast. I'm excited for the people that I got coming on the podcast. I'm excited to push harder and further than I've ever pushed before. And like I said, doing this road trip cleared my head. It's given me something to focus harder and stronger on. And I, you know, and it bonded me so much more with my family, man. It really did. It's just one of those things, you know, but I highly recommend doing some sort of trip like this with your family. It'll bring you guys so much closer, man. Doing something with your family, making a road trip, making memories will make your heart feel so overjoyed and you'll feel so amazing that you can look back on this time and remember the smiles, the quirky little remarks, the, the excitement in your kids' faces, the gleam in their eyes, the, 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 the spark of, oh, you know, I'm telling you, man, being a parent is awesome and making memories like this is just amazing. I, I don't know what else I could say about that. You know, it's just one of those things. I just enjoyed it so much, man. It just, it makes my heart boom, 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 man. It's been awesome. But like I said, too, I, I, Thank you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys for tuning in, for supporting the channel and for the comments, for everything. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't keep doing this, but I keep doing it. I keep growing followers. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you can, you know, like, share, subscribe, push this, help me get out there a little bit further. I'm getting close to my goal. Um, and it's, it's been fantastic, man. I love it. I love doing this. I love being here. And I'm so excited about the future of the show and the podcast and and where we're going to go and how it's going to end. And with some amazing guests, I hope that'll be here this second part of the year, you know, the other half of this year. And it's going to be awesome, man. And just sitting here talking and reflecting on shit, um, history, UFOs, Sasquatch, anything and everything, brothers and sisters, you know? So, oh yeah. And hey, check this out, man. You can get your merch too in the link description. Also, you can get yourself a nice coffee mug you can get a nice t-shirt and, and whatnot. So, but yeah, man, help a brother out, support the show. And, uh, you know, uh, you can check our Patreon. We got a Patreon too. And, uh, all, everything's in the description links guys. So I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with me and bullshitting today. And, uh, I love you guys and, uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace.